Okay, in this video we're going to approximate the integral with an upper and lower sum using GeoGebra, and we should think about how this can help us both teach and learn about the integral. So we'll start with our function, and of course we can use any function here. I'm going to type in negative 0.5 times x cubed, so space then x cubed, and then I'm going to add 2 times x squared, so 2 space x squared minus x plus 1 and then we get our function now you want to pick a well two points on the x-axis this would be your two points that define the range of your integral so let's say that a is equal to capital A of course negative 1 0 on the x-axis and b is equal to um, 2 0 on the x-axis so our integral will go from here, from, from A, up to B. Now we want to set a slider, and let's call this slider N. And we'll set this slider from 1 up to, say, 100. And the increments will go by 1. This variable will define the number of rectangles we use to approximate our upper and lower sums. So now that slider's in place, of course, doesn't do anything yet because we haven't, well, we haven't given any equation that involves this variable. But now we will. So let's say that the upper sum, that we'll call out our variable, equals, now we'll plug in our upper sum formula, and you can see it lays it out here for you. First, I want to know what function are we talking about. Well, we're talking about the function f. What x value do we start at? Well, we'll start at the x value of a. So you type in x, parentheses, a. Then it wants to know what x value do we end at. So you type in x, parentheses, capital B, the x value of point B. And then it wants to know how many rectangles do you want to use. Well, we don't want to set it to any number of rectangles. We want to understand how increasing the number of rectangles helps us to approximate um, the area under the curve. So we set that number equal to n, which is our variable on our slider. And you can see it gives us one rectangle, because here the variable for n is set at 1. But as we drag the slider, it's really nice to see <coughs> excuse me, how we increase the number of rectangles over the given space. The students can, you know, you can widen this slider to really see how this changes as we add more and more rectangles and what's really happening here. Um, but anyway, that's our upper sum. Now we want a second variable. It'll be our lower sum. So our lower sum, oops, lower sum, that's our variable name is going to equal the lower sum. I'm just typing in twice because you have to define the variable for lower and upper sum so you can give it a name. So I'm calling this the lower sum, which is, I guess, logical. So again, we have our formula here, and okay, so you can see it asks for the function again. So f is our function, and we start at x of a, and end at x of b, which means we start at the x value of point a and end at the x value of point b, and the number of rectangles is determined by the same variable n. Right. So now. And you can change, of course, the colors here if you go to your object properties by hitting Control Command E. Let's say the, the upper sum is, I don't know, green, and the and, oh, lower sum is green, excuse me, and the darker green. And the upper sum is something contrast like pink. Close this. This might help us see what's happening here or identify the, the different areas. And now we can insert some dynamic text. So, what do we want to do? Well, we want to identify what the area under the curve is based on the upper and lower sum. We want to compare the two. So we could type in here that the upper sum area equals what? Well, it equals this number right here. So we click the upper sum, and then we're just creating dynamic text. As I drag this slider, it changes the upper sum area with the number of rectangles, which is really nice. We click our Insert Text tool and do the same thing for the lower sum. So the lower sum area is equivalent to this approximation over here. And now we can see that, well, students can see how far apart these areas start. 
at, right? Really big difference. And as we change or increase the number of variables, you can see how the two areas are coming closer together. But maybe we're not seeing that. So now what we have to do is set up another variable that the difference is equal to what? Well, let's say the upper sum minus the lower sum. So highlight what we hope we want them to see. There's a difference right there, but you might hide this algebra window and want to insert some dynamic text. So the upper sum oops, minus the lower sum equals what? Well, it equals this, this difference right here. So we can see clearly that the difference is decreasing. And now we can set one last thing up, because after all, we're all looking at the integral here. So let's set up our integral as the integral excuse me the integral of and it asks you here for the function f starting at x of a and ending at the x value of b and then it'll give you the integral for that that space right there so now we can insert right the dynamic text for the integral and the integral is equal to the integral Oop, not the lower sum excuse me the integral. What are we showing? Well, of course, we're showing that the difference, right, and integral getting closer together. Oh, excuse me. The integral is getting closer to the upper and lower sum areas. Well, let me say that again one last time. As we increase the number of rectangles, our upper and lower sum areas are going closer together. And if we increase the number of rectangles, the interval here, we would see that, uh, that what they're really approaching is the integral, and that's the idea of the integral, right? As we increase the number uh, of rectangles approximating our upper and lower sum, we approach this number, the integral, right here. Um, and, of course, you can arrange these text features in any way you want. You can, um, you can zoom in, of course, or zoom out, depending on what you're looking for. There's all sorts of things you can highlight um, to explore this concept with you, with you well, with yourself and your class. Thanks.